Hello, I'm Mrs. Lang, freshman and sophomore counselor at Western Run High School. I hope everyone is doing well during this time. The purpose of this video is to discuss scheduling for next year. Um, typically, Mr. Boyer and I visit English classrooms during the school year to talk about scheduling, but um, things are a little different this year. So we wanted to get the information out to you as soon as possible so we can start scheduling. I am by no means a professional YouTuber. Um, I did my first TikTok last night. Um, I've got seven likes according to my 10 year old. So, and my camera girl that's helping me out, she is not a professional camera girl either. So, just bear with us and we will get you the information you need. Um, you can share it with your parents. The PowerPoint will be online so you can look over everything that I talk about um, and just refer back to this video if you need. Okay, the second slide of the scheduling PowerPoint um, are the grad requirements, just kind of a recap. You are the graduating class of 2023. Students need 21 credits to graduate from Western Brown High School. State minimum is 20. Western Brown requires 21, so keep that in mind. The breakdown, just to, again as a recap, is as follows. Four English, four math, three science. One of those has to be a life science, which you're taking care of this year in biology. Biology is the study of life. And one has to be a physical science, and we take care of that sophomore year. Three social studies and the state has changed their requirements. One has to be in American history, one has to be a government, so American history was this year, government will be next year as a sophomore, and now they've said the third one has to be world studies. Okay, you need a half credit in PE. Um, remember PE is worth a quarter credit each time you take it. If you did not take PE this year as a freshman, we will require you to finish that up your sophomore year if you haven't done the waiver or done any PE yet. You need a half credit of health, some of you already have that in the bank from first semester. It's a semester class and you got that over with, passed it and everything's good. And some of you are finishing up health uh, now and you'll be done with that. And then six elective credits to equal your 21. Most people graduate with more than 21 credits. The other column shows um, where most ninth graders fall at the end of the year. All right, next slide. Just some important scheduling information to keep in mind or maybe if you're sharing this with your parents and they need a reminder. We have eight periods in our school day. Seven of them are class periods and one period is lunch and homeroom. So as a sophomore, the required courses are considered English 2, whatever math you're supposed to be in, science and government. Please spend the next few days um, discussing the levels. We have honors, CP and general of some of our courses. With your teachers, email them. A lot of them maybe told you where you should be in their opinion already before we left. Elective courses. Sophomores have room for three elective courses. Okay, so remember way back when you were in eighth, eighth graders, I said the cool thing about high school is um, you get to take a lot of classes that you elect or choose to take based on your interests. So sophomores have room for three electives. However, like I said earlier, if you don't do physical education, if you haven't done it yet or gotten the waiver, we will be putting you in PE. So just kind of keep that in mind. So that's one way your dream schedule could be changed. Um, just keep in mind that we, Mr. Boyer and I, divide students into homerooms prior to the beginning of the school year. So we will take care of that. You are not picking your lunch period, your exact lunch period, or your exact homeroom period. Uh, we'll, we'll be using some kind of Google form um, to do the scheduling. If you remember back in January, your homeroom teachers had you do a Google survey or form um, in homeroom. That was just to kind of get numbers. All right, the next slide is the Western Brown High School 10th grade course offerings. And these are the core classes. Okay, so everyone will choose um, one class from each of these categories to fill out their schedule. So English 2 or College Prep English 2, those are your two choices there. Math, you will fall into the Integrated Math 2, CP Geometry, CP Algebra 2 or Honors Algebra 2. Science-wise, remember I said you have to have a physical science to graduate from high school, so we have a general physical science and then a college prep level physical science. And then a few of you, if you go through the College Credit Plus process and you are recommended by your teacher you can take chemistry. Chemistry is a physical science. Um, the one thing I will say about chemistry is you've never had a class that is strictly physical science before like chemistry so you just got to kind of think about it. You're jumping from never having the content before to straight into an entry level college course. So some people choose to take the college prep physical science as a stepping stone and then junior year pick up the chemistry class uh, for college credit. So it's a lot to think about. And then for social studies, you have to have government. We have a general and a CP level of government. So those are your core classes. The fifth slide goes over the elective courses for 10th graders at Western Brown High School. So there's a lot of information um, on this particular slide. So we have Spanish, our foreign language. You do not need a foreign language to graduate from high school. Spanish is considered a college prep 
elective. So if you're thinking about going to college, if you're taking college prep classes, then Spanish is a really good, highly recommended um, elective for you to take. So if you did not take Spanish your freshman year, you would do Spanish 1. If you did Spanish 1 freshman year, you'd move on to Spanish 2. Now we also have a class called World Cultures. It's a great class um, that Mrs. Hernandez has developed talking about cultures from all over the world, just like it says. It is not a foreign language credit, but it's a good elective um, to take to fill your schedule. Social studies, we have constitutional law. That's the class that goes along with our mock trial um, team. Mock trial is where every school in the state gets the same trial to act out, study, that kind of thing, and then they go compete against other schools and there's a big state competition. Um, so that's a really nice elective. Publications, we have WB Publications, that's also known as yearbook. So if you're interested in being the yearbook, just know that there are some after school requirements with that. Um, it is very time consuming, but it's a very um, neat class to be in. Agriculture, for the most part, the rule is that students need to start in ag um, their freshman year. However, if you didn't and you want to join ag, you've seen the things that they've done this year, you need to contact Mr. Russell and he needs to let us know. So his email address is right there. Um, and you will have to start in the beginning class with freshmen. So if you are going, if you are a freshman already in ag, your two choices for sophomore year are lab, livestock science or mechanical principles. And again, if you're a sophomore wanting to start the ag program, you were not in it your freshman year this year and you're wanting to start as a sophomore, you need to get with Mr. Russell Lowe and maybe even CC me in the email so I can see the conversation and get his permission um, to be in the class. So for art, we have ceramics. Um, ceramics is where you use the wheel and you make vases and ashtrays and picture frames and things like that, um, mugs. The prereq for ceramics is that you were in media art or a regular art class um, your freshman year. So kind of keep that in mind when you're scheduling. And then we have our basic art class, media art, um, available again. You can take two art classes in the day if you like, if, you're, if you know the hands-on visual arts is what you're interested in. Um, and you are also able to take classes like art all four years of high school and get credit all four years. The idea is you're doing different projects, um, getting better at your techniques, learning new techniques, that kind of thing. So if you were in art this year and you loved art and you loved Mrs. Howe, then yes, you can take art again sophomore, junior, and senior year. Our biomed program is a program that is it's called Project Lead the Way. Um, it is a science class, a college prep level science class, and in fact you can even take it for um, college credit. You do not have to be taking it for college credit to be in the class. Um, it's a lot of computer-based module type science, but it is a biology, just like you're in biology this year, so it's, it's, it's more of a life science. You cannot take principles of biomed in place of physical science, because again, you need physical science to graduate. Um, so biomed would be one of your electives. Even though it is a science and it does count as a science credit, sophomore year it takes the place as one of your electives. So basically you'd be taking two sciences if you choose to take biomed. And you do need three science credits to graduate so you could potentially be done with science after your sophomore year. But again, this is a hard course. It's a college prep level course. So don't take it just to be done with science. Um, business, if you're interested in moving on with the business program, we have a great DECA club here, very successful. Um, we have principles of marketing and entrepreneurship as our two business choices for sophomores. And then drama. You can be in the drama class starting your freshman year. Um, this must be approved by Ms. Patel, and her email address is on the PowerPoint. So again, you need to shoot her an email, maybe CC me on it so I can see um, the conversation and, and that she says, yeah, your name's you being in drama. So those are some of our electives. We do have a few more, just bear with me a second. Okay. Here are the rest of the electives available to 10th graders. So engineering, our engineering program, very hands-on, very math and science heavy. Um, it's a program you can start your freshman year and be in all four years of high school. So if you're in it now and you want to continue, you would choose engineering design or digital electronics or both if it works in your schedule. Um, if you're wanting to join the program your sophomore year, that is fine. You would do principles of engineering. So that's the entry level course. FCCLA. As a sophomore, you choose FCCLA 2. The focus of FCCLA 2 is career and fashion. So they spend the first half of the year um, career search, that kind of thing. Um, and then the second year is fashion, where they're studying fashion, doing sewing, um, fun things like that. So FCCLA, if you are not in it as a freshman, then you still go ahead and join FCCLA 2. 
uh, three years in JRTC will get you higher rank and higher pay if you're planning on going into the military. So sophomore year is kind of a big year to make that decision. If you are thinking military, sophomore, junior, senior year, if you did not do it this year as a freshman, would, would be what you need. So if you did it as a freshman, then you would go on to be a let two. If you're joining for the first time, then you're a let one. So schedule that accordingly. And then, of course, they have their two electives, Raiders and Drill, Marksmanship. So you can spend two periods of your day um, in JRTC, if you'd like. Okay, music. We do have our chorale. That's our top choir. Um, it's by audition only, so please email Mrs. Jordan if you think you want to try out for chorale, and she's going to work that out somehow. Great. Then we have our women's choir and our men's choir. You are able to do chorale and then either women's choir or men's choir, so you can spend two periods of your day um, you know, in their singing. Then we have concert band and music appreciation also as our music electives. And then finally, physical education. Um, if you just really enjoy PE, and even if you've already taken your PE credits, that's fine. You can continue. We have our general physical education class. Then we have our strength and conditioning, um, which is where you're working out using the weights. They're putting you on a program. And we're introducing a new class called Walking for Fitness. All right, just some final information to wrap things up. Um, schedules are entered in rank order, so some of you, someone is number one in your class and someone is number, you know, 220. So that's how we put in schedules, just a little reward for doing well in your classes. Um, so they're done in rank order, not necessarily the order they're received. All schedules are, of course, subject to change. Um, some possible reasons for a schedule change, classes are capped at a maximum number. So if a class fills up, um, the office, we, Mr. Boyer and I, we will rearrange your schedule. Um, and that leads us down to the bottom point, actually. We'd like you, as you're going through the scheduling process, to think of two alternate electives in case your first two choices don't work out. Okay. Um, end of course results. I'm putting this in there mostly because, just for future reference, end of course results used to determine whether or not kids would be uh, students would be put in different classes or not. There will be no testing the school year. We're still waiting on summer guidance from ODE. Um, I just don't want any surprises in the future. For your class, you are supposed to take American history biology, and math, okay? And math was going to count towards your graduation requirement. You all are working under different requirements um, than the sophomores, juniors, and seniors. So, again, we're just waiting on guidance from ODE, and I'm sure that'll come out this summer. But usually, end of course results are a reason why schedules could change. Um, if you fail a course, we do have credit recovery for sophomores and seniors. So credit recovery is where you, you know, whatever class you fail, you spend, um, sophomores spend, the second half of the year, either first period or last period, in the computer lab um, working on an online curriculum to make up the credit for that course. Okay, And with that, I'm just going to throw this out there, keep in mind, to go to Southern Hills, the Career Tech Center, you have to have five credits. One of them has to be in English and one of them has to be in math. So, you know, I know working at home is probably very challenging, but please finish strong, pass your classes, and just don't even let that be a worry or a concern, especially if you're wanting to go to Southern Hills next year. Um, and then lastly, of course, incorrectly filling out schedules. Um, you don't All right, to wrap things up, there are many options with education. It's really hard to lay out, you know, especially on video, exactly what your schedule will be like for next year. With CCP and vocational programs that we have here in the building and planning to go to the CTC next year, um, there is no presentation that will fit everyone. And we get that and we, we understand that. And there will be a lot of questions. So that's why, again, our email addresses are here. Um, there's mine, there's Mr. Boyer's. So please email us any questions that you or your parents have. If you need anything, Mrs. Wells, you know, and the people of Project Hope, here's her email address. I also wanted to put this flyer out there. Call 211. Um, it is an anonymous crisis hotline available 24-7. If you need anything that's more um, away from the academic realm, and, you know, there's some kind of crisis going on. Any of the three of us or 211 will uh, get the ball rolling to get you the help you need. So please, email us with questions available every day, 8 to 11. I'm checking my email. Mr. Boyer's checking his all the time, too. Everybody stay healthy, and we hope to see you soon. Thanks.